There are three major parts in a modern boat. You've seen the hull, you've seen the string. So now for part three of Sportsman's Behind the Glass, we are breaking down our deck construction process. So let's take a look at what's behind the glass. The deck is the topmost piece of a boat and gives it its layout. It accounts for all of the features that will help you decide what boat is best for you. It's a complicated part and it's the final main structural piece of a boat. Just like all of our other parts, the deck starts with a mold. One special thing to note about our deck molds not found in the other molds is the integrated non-skid or the textured areas that prevent your feet from slipping when the deck is wet. We use a Griptex yacht style non-skid on every deck mold. The fabrication process begins with a layer of gel coat. Once the gel coat dries, fiberglass and resin are simultaneously sprayed to form the first layer of fiberglass, known as the skin coat layer. Using special rollers, the team ensures no air bubbles are trapped in the resin. During this time, they rolled all over every inch of the deck, making sure the fiberglass has adhered to all the radiuses and corners. This process also removes any excess resin. Once the fiberglass is down, composite materials are added to give better strength to the deck surfaces, which also reduce the weight of the final part. Each piece of material is precision cut using state-of-the-art CNC machining right here at Sportsman. This ensures that every single sportsman boat is built to precise specifications. We have two CNC machines used for cutting coring material. The first machine cuts the dry bulk fiberglass layers used throughout each boat. And the second machine cuts all the composite coring materials used for multiple purposes, from strength and rigidity to sound dampening and even insulation for coolers and live wells. The coring materials are pre-sprayed with resin and a wet bed of fiberglass is laid down on the deck before applying each of these materials. Additional fiberglass is applied over the top to encapsulate the composite materials. A key advantage is our strategically located composite materials. As an example, aqua steel is placed around the deck where traditionally a backing plate would be used. These areas include cleats, hardtop legs, leaning posts, and much more. A growing trend of trolling motors on offshore boats has driven us to design in additional supports at the bow for proper installation. All of these materials work together to provide superior strength all around the deck. Once all of the core materials are placed, the process of bulking can begin. This process ensures a consistent thickness and strength for the deck and is done by hand laying the precision cut pieces of fiberglass. Let's take a minute to talk about one of the features on our decks. Now for comparison, I have a plastic pipe plate. You'll see these in a lot of boats. And when you need to gain access, you simply twist it open and you gain access to the important components. Now there are three main disadvantages to this. For one, they are made out of plastic. So over time, the sun will turn them yellow and they will deteriorate. This deterioration also causes them to leak. 
not a great thing to have. And lastly, but probably most importantly, even though they're pretty flush, you do have a little bit of a raised dome on them. And what ends up happening is you always have this dome on your deck instead of a nice flush surface. So to achieve this, what we use is we use a fiberglass puck. These are made out in our small parts department. They're made out of fiberglass and gel coat, just like the deck. And when they are finished, we have a completely flush deck with a nice silicone bead that goes all the way around. If you ever need to gain access, you simply cut it out and then you can inspect everything that is underneath. But this gives us a really nice, high quality finished deck that is all one solid level with no differences in materials. All of our decks require additional parts that will eventually become coolers, live walls, and storage boxes. These parts cannot be made inside the deck mold because it wouldn't allow the deck to be pulled off the mold. We will explore this process in depth in our next episode. The boxes get bonded to the deck using methylmethacrylate, the same aerospace bonding agent we use for bonding the stringers to the hull. Once all of the boxes are in place, the deck is pulled from the mold and it's ready to be moved into the cut and grind booth. Special templates called splashers are used to mark the precise location of speakers, rod holders, cup holders, and much more. These templates deliver precision placement of all components and is a testament to our closely monitored quality standards. The top of the boxes that were installed earlier get cut open, revealing the finished interior of each box. Upon completion, the deck gets wheeled forward to meet up with the hull and stringer to await the next step. Thank you for spending time with us today taking a look at our deck construction. This is part of our SportTech advanced fabrication process, a proprietary combination of processes and materials that yield the best result each step of the way and has been thoroughly tested for durability, longevity, and finish. All Sportsman boats feature 100% composite construction with zero wood. Join us in our next episode, where we're going to be exploring our small parts, which include live holes, coolers, and storage boxes. From Somerville, South Carolina, my name is Victor, and thank you for watching.